Cool. So I'm at Tufts University, and I'm going to talk about Tufts GIS Expo Explorer. Really, just a little quick background before I show you the new app we've designed. Uh, at Tufts, we have an annual poster expo every year uh, where students and faculty come out, people from industry, ESRI folks, all sorts of folks come out. And uh, last year, we had 247 student entries, Tufts student entries. So it's the largest uh, academic GIS poster expo in the country. There was no record before we set the record, and we like to break our own record every year. So it's a good time. But we have lots of student projects as a result. Real quick, we have a very emerging GIS program. We have over 16 GIS courses, 25 to about 40 other courses that use GIS, um, 600 to 800 power users a year, which may not seem that big, but we're the smallest research one university in the country. So we have a really high density of GIS usage or geospatial usage in general at Tufts. We used to put all these projects online kind of in a list form and that wasn't working. So what we did is we designed a new application called the, the Expo Explorer to really just sort of discover and visualize uh, student GIS related projects. So we can see here, this is the application. So the and hits up here, so there's just under 1,200 student projects. We also see the time frame, so we can see the steadily increasing uh, use in geospatial technology at our university. This isn't a decrease here. This is the fall semester. We don't have those loaded yet. And so what we can do right off the bat is we can just start browsing some posters. So this is a student project. This is in urban planning. This is a student looking at the Green Line extension in Boston. The Green Line is one of our subway lines, so the impact of the Green Line extension. And if one wants to, you can download the full PDF of the project there. This is another project. One of my students, I teach at the Fletcher School, looking at sort of vulnerability of Syrian refugees in Turkey. So there's ability to browse. But as one scrolls down, we start to get more dashboard analytics on the student projects. So we can see what topics many of the projects are engaging in. We can see the different departments that they're coming from. So this is urban environmental planning and policy. That's our oldest geospatial program. The different schools, courses, et cetera. And we can visualize the geographic extents of the projects in multiple ways to get a sense of where our students are engaged in research throughout the world. Now, the first thing that's pretty easy to do is one can do a search. So maybe Pakistan. So I search for Pakistan, right? People often search by geographic regions first. And so we have like 12 student projects related to Pakistan. I can look at one right off the bat. This is Ben's project looking at drone strikes. So he's studying the analysis of proximity to roads and its impact on civilian casualties. And he actually developed a measure if those drone strikes are just a, a little bit closer to roads, it has a significant uh, impact on civilian casualties. I wish he'd used a different color scheme for his uh, uh, kernel smoothing density that he did, but that's all right, all right? And you can browse through these a bit. Might look at something like, this is political violence in Pakistan, kind of a classic change detection by uh, districts, in this case, looking at political violence change over time in Pakistan. So one can search and discover that way. However, all these widgets are interactive. So if I scroll down, so Tufts is the most international school in the United States. And so let's say we want to take a look at various projects that are outside of the United States. So here, these are all the student projects outside of the US, visualizing a couple of different ways. And these are all interactive. I don't have time to zoom in on the widgets and things like that, but I think you get the idea. And for us, a lot of our research is going on in Northern Latin America, Mexico, a lot of Central Africa, Northwest Africa, South Asia is huge at Tufts. So we can kind of discover that way. But as I come up here, we'll see the widgets have all changed. So for instance, it was arts and sciences, the school. Now the Fletcher School, where I teach, now has the highest concentration. And for our other arts and sciences departments, international relations, which is an undergraduate major, has the highest concentrations, then civil and environmental engineering, et cetera. The topics also change. And in fact, I can explore some of the topics. So maybe I want to combine international projects with humanitarian assistance. So I click that. And we have about, in this case, just under 70 
student projects international related to humanitarian assistance. There's probably more, but that's kind of the way it goes with this. And if I, I can also browse a couple of these really quickly. So for instance, I might want to take a look at something like what's the impact, or the impact on uh, humans with mining and logging in the DRC, something I might be interested in. Whoop, don't go away. Or I might be interested in identifying areas at risk uh, for terrorist attacks in Lebanon. Now, I can also take a look at something like Massachusetts. Stuff, Tufts is also very local. If I can spell Massachusetts, that's the hardest part. Uh, no, and believe it or not, the United States is part of the world. It doesn't always feel like it. Oh no, see, I knew it. There we go. All right, so now we have over 400 hits here, right? A lot of our students also do very local research. This is a statistical clustering of opioid ec epidemics in mass. Or look, this is another stats cluster looking at the relationship between humans and black bears in Massachusetts. And as remember, I'm searching Massachusetts, so our analytics change quite a bit. Now, our urban environmental policy and planning is by far the biggest, right? Arts and sciences is the biggest, followed by environmental studies, et cetera. So I'll finish up with one more. We can also take a look at courses. So for instance, we have a new course in conservation medicine that focuses on animal health, wildlife management. It's at our vet school. It's a very popular GIS course. So now I'm looking at an individual course. And here, I can quickly browse, and I can look at the analytics and the topics and that sort of thing, but I can just browse through. There's the, the black bears again, right? Some of the various posters. I love this class. They have some of the coolest, coolest projects from rhinos, right? Whoop. Sorry, it's a little wonky on the mouse. Two more animal health. Two looking at endangered wildlife in Sri Lanka. I, I love little critters. They put the critters all over their maps all the time. I think it's great. And they just won the uh, Esri uh, Cartography Expo was a tough student this year, so we're pretty excited about that. So, let me wrap it up. So, that's the expo, it's a way to explore, dip and discover student projects. Who uses this? Well, students, faculty, and staff uh, use it, and it's really become a very good teaching tool to identify projects in different application areas, methodologies, data sources, and also design principles about infographic design and large format infographic design. So many of our faculty use these. I, we require students to explore and use this in the classes. A lot of administrators also really like to use this in faculty to see what projects are going on in the, their different departments, different schools, et cetera. What we do is uh, for the topics and subtopic keywords, we have very detailed controlled vocabularies. We worked with Esri on this quite a while ago to develop some uh, controlled vocabulary for topics. We use geonames for location information, bounty boxes, and also we do a hierarchical geographic locations. We create a Google form for metadata. We use lots of controlled vocabularies. It sounds simple, but it works pretty well. And we have the students enter the metadata when they actually submit their projects. And we also have them sign a release form, et cetera. There's always a bit of cleanup, uh, but it works pretty well. It's better than us doing all the metadata. On the back end is Solar. If you haven't used Solar before, it's an open source enterprise search indexing. We ingest the metadata in there. It indexes the living daylight side of the metadata, makes it very searchable. And on the front end, we have Banana. Banana is an open source uh, dashboard product. Uh, it's a fork of Cabana. It allows for really great customized widgets that one can build, um, very easy to use. And I think you got the idea, I'll skip this slide. So thank you very much. If you wanna go to gis.tufts.edu, check it out. And we'd love to also start bringing in more and more student research from other universities. I know a lot of people have that. It just kind of vanishes out in the ether. So thanks. <laughs>